Hey guys, John Scott here for WrestleLine and uh, really pleased to say on the podcast today uh, for the first time is Ricky Knight Jr. How you doing, Ricky? How you doing, John? It's, it's an honour to be on here. Um, hey, more, you're more than welcome. I look forward to it. Yeah, uh, now obviously we are in uh, quite unique times, obviously, uh, during this pandemic and I'm sure uh, like most of the other guests that I've had on here, uh, it's been quite testing times. How are uh, how are you coping with it at the moment um, in terms of not being able to uh, to get into that ring as such? Oh, it's, it's very um, frustrating. The, the hardest part for me, obviously, you know, as well as the shows, is trying to stay away from the naughty cupboard in my house where all the chocolate is. Um, right, you know, yeah. At home all day and I, I don't want to be pigging out. So, um, you know, obviously when, we, when we've got shows at the weekend, it's easier because, um, you know, you've got something to look forward to. You've got something to keep your body in shape for. But now we we don't know when that, when we're next going to get in the ring, so it's uh it's hard to stay motivated. But you know I've been good so far, and you know I, I feel fitter now than I do when I wrestle because I'm out walking all the time, or out jogging or cycling, and you know obviously I've got weights in my house. So um, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it is a struggle. You know that's that's the main struggle, and missing the the adrenaline rush and the buzz of being out in front of the you know the fans because that's yeah, the best yeah. that's that's the best feeling in the world, and not being able to have that is uh you know. That that's that's the hardest part for definite. Mm-hmm. Now um, you're you're very like active wrestler. I mean you're you're always working like most weekends, um, especially with WAW obviously, and, and then other promotions. How how busy was your schedule um, looking before all this come about, and how much has uh, how much has cancelled? Um, well, loads. Um, I mean it's it's ridiculous. What we go in April? I mean I was meant to fly to. Um, uh, What's it called? Uh, Orlando, sorry. Um, it's obviously right, WrestleMania, okay. Re- WrestleMania oh, week. Man. I was then going to pop back and do... Um, so I was flying out on the uh, Monday, mm-hmm. fly, uh, flying home on the Friday, and then I was doing Rev Pro shows all that weekend. So, um, wow. yeah, so wow. that, that, that's the start of April. And um, with, Re- yeah. with Revolution Pro Wrestling, I had like uh, every weekend um, of April, every weekend of May. So um, just with them, I've lost a lot. And WW, we had um, my grand had like uh, two weeks worth of holiday camps that we met mm-hmm. to do um, during obviously the half term. And you know, as well as other shows like BWR and um, yeah, numerous not other ones that uh, are in the diary. But you know, it's the same boat everyone else is, is in. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, man, that's that's heartbreaking. The the Orlando trip and how cool that would have been in that that atmosphere and vibe. I know of a lot of guys that were scheduled to go there as well. Yeah, lo- uh, loads of people are, lo- are lost out on that. I mean, I'm lucky enough. Yeah. I've been before, but I uh, I know a few people that this is their first time. So you know, they must have been devastated. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, obviously, you've obviously in a, a complete wrestling family. Uh, as I'm sure many of my listeners know, um, and I've got to ask a question here. Like, obviously, you've got all of this uh, around you in your family; it's in your blood almost. Um, was it just an absolute given that you were going to be um, in the world of professional wrestling yourself, or did you, did you ever have a time where maybe that wasn't going to be the case, and, and you wanted to pursue something else? Well, you know, I've, I've always loved wrestling from the minute I was born. Uh, my dad got me in a ring at like four days old. But right. um, I, I actually used to play uh, uh, four. That was either two or four days, two days old or four days. Old, I can't remember. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I then uh, like my dad. I played football as well um, at a pretty mm-hmm. decent standard. I was in like the the Norwich Academy. Um, right. You know, up till when I was like a, a, a teenager, and obviously that that didn't work out due to wrestling because I was missing games to go and wrestle. You know, I sort mm-hmm. of fell in. I sort of fell in love with wrestling. Uh, at an early age, because my dad done it, you know what I mean? My dad's always been my hero. Yeah. So um, I remember going out and managing Zach at like four years old against my mm-hmm. dad, and then I'd do um, silly stuff with my dad, like a Bronco Buster, or I'd do uh, a swan right. off the top onto him, and, you know, on on the holiday mm-hmm. camps, so like four or five day, yeah. uh, four or five years old, and then from there, I then sort of, um, you know, then started wrestling when I was like, start, start wrestling training when I was like nine years old, and from there, I sort mm-hmm. of just got hooked on it. You know, obviously, I weren't doing all the yeah. all the all the crazy stuff, taking big bumps at that sort of age. But I was doing the basic stuff, and I started having basic matches at like ten years old, and yeah. Mm. And from from there, nothing else really mattered. I, you know, I couldn't imagine not doing anything else but wrestling. Yeah. So from that sort of age, it was it was 
definitely I was going to be a professional wrestler. Sure. And and your your dad, I mean, he's still playing football, isn't he? I mean, I still see loads of posts of him with his team. I'm like, he, he's got to be as fit as a fiddle still. Um, yeah. I, you know, I remember going way back in the day down to the FWA, like National Green, and that's where I first saw your dad, um, the Zebra Kid. And that was like my, I keep saying this to people because a lot of my listeners now, they don't. I don't quite understand how the UK industry has changed, but once upon a time there wasn't a whole lot of promotion around. No. And um, FWA, like I didn't even know about that until I got like left school, because before then it was just like uh, it was just like the shows that run a circuit almost that I used to see. But yeah, then there was this whole new world open to me, and uh, obviously some of those guys are very much still around today, which is incredible. Um, yeah. Including your dad. Um, yeah, yeah. Has there been? I always ask this because has there been like a lot more pressure on yourself given the the kind of family ties that you have? Have you felt like a lot more pressures on you to sort of live up to those expectations, or has that been? I mean, has that been a good thing or a bad thing in your life? Yeah, I mean, it's it's, a, it's definitely a good thing, isn't it? Because you know, if you haven't got nothing to strive for, then what's the point of doing it, you know what I mean? My dad, sure. uh, Zebra Kid, I, I will always argue, was probably the biggest name in Britain in the FWA mm-hmm. times. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he was known for being violent. He, he wrestled all the imports. He's the original import killer. So, um, yeah. you know, like, like just, just a saying, you know, my dad's got very, I've got very big shoes to fill. And, um, you know, it gives me something, every time I achieve something a little bit more, you know, it's part of that shoe filled. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's brilliant that my dad's left, going to leave the legacy that he has and for me to be able to you know try for the shoes if not expand his shoes is um sure. you know you know it gives me something to aim for mm-hmm. yeah no absolutely um now obviously uh, how uh, when you started to first obviously get into business obviously from a very very young age um you've been yeah yeah for like ages i mean you're you're still very young I mean, yeah i'm 20 I'm just, uh, <laughs> i feel really old when you say that um <laughs> <laughs> so, but you've got this incredible wealth of knowledge like under your belt already, which is definitely going to, like, I mean, that's going to flat out give you, I think, the next 10 years, you're going to be a cut above the rest. In I hope so, yeah. Your age and around you, I would imagine. Um, yeah, yeah. But your kind of style, what, what kind of influences have you taken, like, growing up and then also, like, when you started to train? Um, who are some of those people that you've taken stuff off of? Who have been some of your, your big influences in that in that way? Um, I mean, you, I don't really look any more past my family. You know, I've took a, a little something from all of their game. Um, sure. You know, obviously, my dad is uh, probably the best all-round worker still, mm-hmm. in my opinion, mm-hmm. um, like, worldwide. But, mm-hmm. so, you know, I've took a lot from him, especially, like, you know, his aggression is brawling. Um, mm-hmm. you, you know, is ruthless. It don't matter yeah. who you are. It don't matter how long you've been wrestling. It don't matter, you know, wh- what your name is. He'll go in there. He'll treat you the same. And he's going there to mess you up. He's going in there to win. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, then, I, then I then took, you know, parts from Zach's game. You know, Zach was um, a, a great high flyer, mm-hmm. um, you know, with the cruise road style. So I took parts from his game. And my granddad, you know, is he's, he's, uh, 68 and he still wrestles. Um, yeah. You yeah. know, I, was, I took parts from his game because... Uh, he, he was back in the day, you know, when he when he was first around, he was one of the best uh, villains in the in the sure. UK when, when when wrestling was really dead. You know, only Brian Dixon was running. He um, yeah. he you know he's a perfect villain and the perfect example of that. And you know, I've been lucky enough to to get in the ring with all of them and um, take a little bit from each of their game and add it to my own. So you know, I'm, I'm a very very unique worker and don't work off just one of them. And um, you know, and I've got like a sparring partner called Alex Young. Who's fantastic? He he works down in Norwich in WW, but um, you know, not many people would have heard of him. And if you listen to this podcast, just go online and look at uh, Alexander Young. He's he's fantastic, and how he ain't everywhere, I'll never know. But you know, I've been yeah. I've been lucky enough that he's always pushed me in the gym, like mm-hmm. as in like the, the wrestling gym, to um, you know get in the ring and train with him and try new stuff. Always trying new stuff because you you got to constantly adapt and constantly evolve. So you know, I'm very lucky that I've took a lot from everyone around me, and then. You know, you, you have to then look at some of the greats, you know, like Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels. You have to you have to look at why were they so good, why were they so successful, and you have to try mm-hmm. and add it to, to yourself to be the best you can, to be, you know, as successful as you can as well. Sure. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, your, your career, like, how would you, in terms of like, how you dabbled into a bit of poker, what, what do you prefer? Do you prefer, um, do you prefer like playing the bad guy side of things or the good guy, or, or do you adapt to either or, like, depending on what promotion yeah, you're at? Yeah, it, 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 it really does. It, it don't matter to me, to be honest with you. A lot of my work doesn't change whether I'm a whether I'm a bad guy, whether I'm a good guy, because you sure. know I, I still do the same stuff. I just do it in a different manner, and um, mm-hmm. I think that's where it changed. You know, I'm still just as aggressive if I'm a good guy. I'm still mm-hmm. just as aggressive if I'm a bad guy. I'm still as flashy whether I'm a good guy. I'm still as flashy whether I'm a bad guy. I just do it in a different demeanour, and that's sort of yeah. um, you know what I got. I don't I don't prefer doing either or either. Um, I just mm-hmm. want to go in there. Put on the best match on the card, and you know let let people remember that RKJ was on that show. So it doesn't matter whether I'm a good guy or a bad guy. Sure, no, that makes perfect sense. And uh, obviously, like you, you know, you've had this. Although you're only 20, which is crazy to think, but you've had quite the career so far. Who have been some of your like sort of? Who would you say you've had the best chemistry with in the ring? Who have you enjoyed working with the most? Um, I mean, there, there's three that stick out straight away. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, my dad's one of them because yeah. when I first come onto the, the, the camps and stuff like that, when I was like, you know, I was wrestling the camps under a mask of like 13, 14 years old. Sure. And um, my, I'd wrestle my dad every week, week, where, you know, day in, day out. And it, it beat the living crap out of me. <laughs> I'd be bruised, I'd be cut. <laughs> he, brought me, he, brought me, he brought me in the right way. And, you know, right. we've gone on to do some fantastic things. We had some great storylines down in Norwich. Um, mm-hmm. We've wrestled up in Grimsby. We wrestled all over the place. And, Funny enough, I just wrestled with Dad this time last year um, at mm-hmm. Car Road in front of five thousand people. Yeah, um, you know, and yeah. we won like match of the year down in WW, mm-hmm. and that for me, you know, shows that we've got great chemistry. And obviously, because he's been my dad, you know, there's great chemistry there. No matter what we do, we play football together, wrestle together, we do tennis yeah. together, it don't matter. And um, another one that sticks out would be, like I mentioned earlier, uh, Alex Young, because yeah. we always get we always get the ring together, we always train together, always pushing each other to a different limit. And you know, we've gone to shows and. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, again, people spoke about that, and um, so he sticks out um, as well. Another one, Robbie X. I've had some mm-hmm. fantastic matches with Robbie X in um, Revolution Pro Wrestling, um, mm-hmm. BWR. Um, so, uh, no, we never wrestled in the South Side, but yeah, the main two, especially over the last last year, Robbie's sort of been someone that I go to a show, and it's like, you know, you, you, it's announced you wrestle Robbie. You, you're going in there. You're ready for a, you're ready for a war, and you're ready mm-hmm. to put on the the best match on the show because Robbie's another one. You know, I think Robbie's fantastic, and um, he wants to go in there and he wants to he wants to be, you know, that he wants to see his match be remembered just like me. So every time I go in there, Robbie, I know it's going to be something special. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, just while uh, I know you mentioned your dad earlier, like, I really want to plug this out to my audience, which of course is his book that's now available, and. I've got to say, like, for, for those people that don't know uh, about your dad, like, stuff around, like, his health, and I'm really, really good for it because he, he goes out of his way all the time when it comes to, like, mental health issues and depression, and he's very open to practically anybody, um, especially on my, like, social medias that I've seen. Like, he's very much there. Um, and obviously, he's got this book out at the moment, which is, is absolutely fantastic. I know that... Um, uh, uh, sister company Turnbuckle TV have just are gonna about to put in like quite a big order as well. Um, mm. It's quite a big thing. Tell us quite a little bit about that. So I, I do want to kind of plug it a little bit on it. I think um, it's, it's a really good read, and you know, like those people that maybe not as familiar with your dad. Yeah. Um, well, with with his book, it is um, you know you're right in saying. I'll just go back to that in a minute. But you're right in saying that you know he, he helps everyone and everyone. My dad's. One of the realest men you'll ever meet, you know. Yeah, genuine, it's, it's unbelievable. Genuine as well. I mean, all your family are, to be honest with you. Like from what I've seen, uh, I think they're like, really genuine. I think that always comes across when you hear about the nights. Totally yeah. genuine, especially totally transparent. Especially my dad, because I, I, you know, obviously I spend more time with my dad than anyone else. But yeah. what, my, my dad's very much like my granddad. You know, what what you see is what you get, and yeah. there's nothing more than that. Like yeah. you know, what what you see is what you get, and he's. My, I've been at home or, you know, I've had to drive around to his house and um, like look after the kids while he, there's uh, one example, stick out of my head, he, someone, um, there's a multi-story car park, someone's on the top of there, obviously um, going to do something, you know, uh, um, right. you, you know you know what I'm saying, and, yeah, 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 and my, yeah. my, my dad drove down there at three in the morning, I remember getting the phone call driving around to come to his house, three in the morning he drove down there, 
and you know he spoke he spoke to this man and he he spoke him out of uh, the thoughts he was having mm-hmm. and um he managed to get uh, this 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 man a job with him and this he now lives in a five bedroom house and he's back with his uh, his wife and with 